darf Nini Joana Zamora vorstellen. Sie kommt aus Bogota, hat dort Bauingenieurwesen studiert, hat in Deutschland äh, Photogrammetry und Geoinformatics auf Englisch studiert und ist hier in Deutschland und äh, macht jetzt den Vortrag. So, guten Morgen. Ich werde meinen Vortrag auf Englisch halten, weil mein Deutsch ist noch nicht gut genug und alle diese technischen Sachen. Then, uh, I will talk about the landslide hazard map of Bogota and updating. This project was developed uh, with the Risk Management Institute and Climate Change of Bogota, Colombia. So first of all, the agenda, we have the contents of landslides in Bogota. There are two methodologies. The first one is this semi-quantitative evaluation and stability. Then I will talk about the natural slopes, contrasting op maps, software and use cases, impact and results, and then conclusions. First, uh, contents of landslides in Bogota. Well, uh, we look uh, where Colombia is located. Colombia is in, in the north part of uh, Latin America. And then here is Bogota, is in the middle of the country. So some basic information of Bogota. The height of Bogota is about 2,600 uh, 2, meters. It is located in uh, its Andes. The uh, studied area is about 16,000 hectares and is situated in an intertropical convergence zone. The population exceeds uh, 8 million of inhabitants. And here you see this, this area, this magenta area, is the area that uh, the study covers because this is the area where the mountains are. But why uh, the landslides occur in Bogota? So we have a cocktail of many factors that make that uh, landslides happen. So the first is that the mountains have natural uh, uh, susceptibility to the, due to the geomorphology. And then also there are frequent precipitation and then we have the global climate change and El Niño and La Niña. And also uh, Bogota is, is located in an intermediate earthquake zone. So Bogota mountains are prone to landslides. But why a uh, landslide occur? What, what is what, what is this problem? What what happened? Here there are three different situations, and you see that landslides in landslides the more important things are rain, angle, and material. And the first one you see a block, and there are the forces that act uh, in the block. So the gravitational force, the normal force, a shear force, and strength uh, and shear, shear, shear strength. So when this shear force is uh, smaller than the shear strength, the block will not move. But what will happen if the angle is steep, steeper as in, in this situation? Then is, uh, the shear force is equal to shear strength. Then the block will move or will not move. But when there is rain, for example, uh, uh, a stark, uh, strong rain, then the block will move. And then in the third situation, the angle is steeper uh, than in this situation. And then, of course, the uh, shear force is much bigger than the shear strength, and they will, will move, and then we'll, we have a landslide. But there is not also these problems that I already explained. Uh, there is also a social problematic that we have in Bogota. And then uh, you know that there are many refugees, not only from all the country, but also from Venezuela now. And they live in so, such a risky zones like you see here. So there is a social problematic. We have accelerated and disordered urban growth, and people live in these uh, regions, like you see, like I already show. So and there is human activity and queries, and a slope of rivers and streams, and a, a steep slope zones and dams. And here, an important number, approximately uh, 3.5 million of people live in these such a risky zones. And here you see, for example, 
the situation is, 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 is dangerous, like you see. This point is located in the western part, in western south part of Bogota, and this is this phenomenon. And this is considered the largest landslide phenomenon in urban areas of Latin America with this uh, 73 hectares, approximately. And then here you see a crack of about one meter, and the house is parted in the half. Then uh, we, we, we talk about many, many different factors that make it the necessity of a land management plan updating of Bogota. And, and there was include the landslide and flooded maps updating. And that was necessary to visualize and do process basic and complex information. So the municipality of Bogota hired 32 professionals to perform this project and was used open source software, QGIS, um, GRASS, and SAGA. This part, it was not easy to, to convince these people to use this, this, this software because at the beginning, they wanted to buy RG software, many, many new licenses and modules. Finally, they, accept, they accepted to do it like I, I suggested. And then there was the training of open source software. They saved uh, about 90,000 euros. The hardware capacity was exploited because all people had installed these programs. And then we have a good uh, result. So they updated maps. So first, the, uh, the methodology, semi-quantitative stability evaluation, and then consists of categorizing and weighting the factors that cause instability according to the influence of this in the landslides. So there is a stability rate that this is the sum of all these factors that you see here. So material relief, drainage, land use, erosion, climate, earthquake, and of course, human factor is a very important aspect. And I will show you a series of maps where uh, the best rating is represented in green and the worst is represented in red. The higher the rate is, the better the stability is. So first we have drainage, and I will not explain in a, a very um, so detail each factor because there is not enough time. But the drainage was evaluated like you see here, the classification, classification and average slope. And then these two variables were combined. And then you see that the average slope of drains, the higher here, and drainage density, of course, the, if you had so much water, there is worse. And then here you see that the, the rating is six. So the areas in six are represented in red, like I already explained. And do you remember this uh, phenomenon that I talk about? The largest landslide phenomenon in Latin America is here. This is about 13, the rate for this phenomenon. And then 10 rate conditions. And for this variable, it was not easy to, to have a result because the methodology says that you have to consider all these subsums and all these slopes. And afterwards, you have to combine this first result with this profile, with this convex, linear, or concave. So it was not so easy to, to perform this variable. And, and then I used Saga. And for um, this project, this, this uh, algorithm, this is the rain surface classification algorithm. And you combine then uh, the convexity, the slope, and the texture. And if you compare this for the previous study and this with the, with the updated study, you see that here there is a, more, a much more um, higher level of detail. Then the, the third uh, variable was the material and land use. And, and there are another, another group of variables, that this is the triggering factors. And then you see the human factor, erosion, climate, and earthquake. And for the human factor here, again, the largest human, the largest uh, landslide in Latin America is represented with a bad uh, rate. 
so erosion and climate. And climate is not bad for this region, for the largest uh, lands in Latin America, and then earthquake. Afterwards, you combine all these variables, so these eight variables are combined, and they exhibit a uh, normal distribution, and then there are five category categories defined uh, between very high and very low hazard level. And here, this is... This is, it, it means that this, this part has, had a very high uh, hazard level. The second methodology is a little bit uh, more complex because it's a probabilistic methodology. And then the basic, princi princ the basic principle uh, says that uh, in this methodology, a family of measurements of heights in meters and the corresponding lengths in meters or uh, vertical gradient lines in a natural high slope of homogeneous composition and origin are linked by this equation. So there is an, it, is, it says only that the heights and lengths in a high slope are related with this equation. But important to see here is that these uh, regions should be homogeneous and, uh, and the composition should be homogeneous and the origin should be homo homogeneous also. Then for applying this equation, uh, it was used the um, hydrological modeling. And for doing this, grass was used because it was necessary to define small watersheds. So if you had here a comparison between the results of commercial sulfur, and here, for example, you see that the watershed done, uh, doesn't uh, follow the natural uh, landforms of the terrain because it's completely horizontal. But if you see these uh, watersheds in, in red, they are much better. And then I use this uh, grass sulfur to define these uh, water sets. And then afterwards, it was necessary to find the height and length. And this is like this, that you define these families, like I already showed here. So families of slopes, like here. So many different groups of slopes, which have different size. So here. Uh, there is, this is the, the family, and this is an envelope. And here, you, uh, the, the methodology says that you have to find the distance between this point and this point, this point and this point, this point and this point, and so on, for the first contour line. And afterwards, you have to find the distance between this and the next uh, contour line, and so on, until the whole family is covered. So this is not easy to find that, uh, uh, to do it manually would be uh, horrible, cumbersome, and the, the probability of making mistakes they would be high. So it was necessary then uh, uh, developed in Visual Basic in Excel. And then here you see a table with the coordinates in X and Y. And afterwards, the table, sorry that I left this in Spanish. And then you have the, the average, the, the maximum, and the minimum for each contour line, like I already explained. Afterwards, was necessary the geotechnical modeling that I will not explain here, and the results uh, yield the safety factor, and these categories were defined like in the previous methodology using a normal distribution. The contrasting of maps, then you have the two partial results for the, for the first methodologies, and then you it was used this matrix to, to say what is the result when it is uh, the naturalist loss methodology and semi-quantitative methodology. And then with, with many, many um, combination of these, these maps, these two partial results. But like you know, a model without um, calibration is not good enough. So, there was an inventory of the processes, and these processes says how a landslide, the landslide that had of, of already occurred in Bogota, 
And then you have this uh, table where the, when if the process is active, the probability is very high and so on. So for calibrating this, this map, was these processes were used. Instruments are another um, in input from this for this map, and this in this in this uh, study, the landslide of each block was studied and was included afterwards in the map. So at the end, you have the components of the map. So the first result is the combination of the two methodologies, and then the processes, the instruments, and then you have the landslide hazard hazard map of Bogota. And the processors are the most important because in these processes, like I already explained, you already know the landslide, the hazard. And then, for example, if the methodology here says that the hazard is very low, but the processor says that the, the hazard is very high, the result would be very high. So far, and use cases. So there were many, many issues because the amount of information was big, was not so easy to, to deal with this information. So for example, to merge small areas to adjacent areas was used with clean vector factor with remove small areas, or to erase polygons was used uh, with solve with overlapping vector map, not operator, obtain a digital elevation model from contour lines with, re with solve with interpolating surfaces, or combination of the polygons, it was solved with overlapping map. Of course, most of these processes you can solve with a commercial solver. But for example, with this one, when you use ArcGIS for doing this, you have to do it three times, and then uh, the time that you spend for doing these processes is bigger than this with grass. And for example, for this one, erase polygons is a simple process, but you need the most expensive license of ArcGIS for doing it. For the smoothing was also used grass, and for, topoli, uh, for topology fixing was used, of course, grass. Uh, the impact and results, then there is the map of landslide hazard uh, in Bogota, and here you see that 64% uh, of the area is in medium hazard. It doesn't mean that Bogota is so dangerous. You can visit Bogota. So from this map, uh, new suitable areas for housing projects can be defined. So this is a very important input in the planification of the city. Uh, uh, the success of risk management depends on continuous monitoring. With this map, it doesn't mean that there is something fixed because it's, uh, there is very dynamic the situation in Bogota, like I already explained and update up such a maps play an important role in the risk management. This is the first input for prevention. And do you remember this? The largest uh, landslide in urban areas in Latin America, they made a wall of about 200 meters, and it was necessary then the relocation of 3,000 families. The conclusion is that in processing of uh, large volumes of geographical information, different alternatives should be explored. Of, and, and when you when you find a big or large volumes of geographical information, this is, um, grass is very efficient. Um, a model is a simplification of the reality. That means that there will be variables that they will not take it into account. And then that's why it's necessary that more specific uh, um, studies are executed. Validation of the map was used with the processes, like I already explained, because in these processes the hazard was already known. So that was my presentation. So, gibt es Fragen? Keine Fragen.
Fragen? Yeah, thank you very much for your presentation. I have one question. Um, you said that you need land cover data, land use data for your model. Sorry, they, they you, you need land use data for mm -hmm. your model. Yes. Where did you take the data from? From which sources do you have this data? Mm, they were a combination of different things, um, but um, mainly was from Google Earth. Okay. So it was from remote sensing. And there was also an input from an, from an entity, but the resolution was not so good. So okay. there was not so detailed because we need a, a scale of one five thousand. So mainly Google Earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm asking because I think it's a very interesting development. Now we had yesterday this session about Code.de and the Copernicus data. And it's also an open source approach. And I think in future we can use open source GIS and open source remote sensing data to get data like for your problems about land cover, about DEM, and so on. Thanks. Weitere Fragen? You told us about how you validated your results from your model. How the validation? How were the results? I didn't understand. The results? Say it again. Yeah, you validated the model using real life data? Correct? You, there is a model, yes. Yeah, you built the model and then you validated the model using the real life data? I validated the model with uh -huh. the processes, yes. Uh -huh. More for and dynamic. How process. were the results of the validation? How was? The results. The results of if the model was uh, correct, validated, you mean? Uh huh. Yes, there were many, many different uh, approaches because they, uh, they used the results of the previous study. So the previous study was 20 years ago. So it was a little bit, uh, the map that we have is not so, was not so um, update, was not so current. And then you, we use many approaches until we find the, the best one. And yeah, the, the approach is, is this very, very reliable model. This one. Noch Fragen? Ich sehe keine mehr. Dann bedanke ich mich nochmal bei Nini Joanna Zamora und dann geht's zur Kaffeepause.